Welcome to Porky's Corner. My name is Russ Hartley at BigVern44 on Twitter. It's March the 5th, this is the first day I'm going to be making a mini documentary about Yui Fury leading up to his fight with Sam Sexton for a British title. Uh, my good friend Peter Fury has given me permission to do to basically do what, do what I want with camera leading up to Yui's fight. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get as much footage as I can and we're going to pick the best bits out and we're going to probably do part one up to say part five, probably an hour a day and I'll put it on, I'll put it on YouTube on the channel Porky's Corner and that's for everybody to look at. I'm not doing it for, for money, I'm not doing it for views, it's not what I'm about, it's something that I want, I've always wanted to do and I think it's going to show you in a different light. So you was a quiet kid and uh, I'm going to show you hopefully some things behind the scene that you might not see. Boxing is a very very rough sport and uh, it ain't all about glamour because don't forget only 2% retire successful and financially secure, the other 98% that's just how it goes but all boxers deserve respect in my opinion uh, we've got a guy over from America, New York, he's called John He's worked with Shannon Briggs and Ray Mercer uh, amongst other champions. He'll probably be, be in a few interviews. You'll see him bouncing about on the tapes, on the, on the clips, should I say, videos. Peter will obviously be in it. Yui, me. I mean, you might get me on odd time, just telling you what, what day you were on and where we're about and that. And, you know, you might get odd people popping in, you know. Dennis Hobson, Asif Valley, uh, sparring partners, uh, Savannah, Savannah Marshall's upstairs, you might see her odd time in, in gym. Uh, just sit back and enjoy it. It's going to be a good ride. It's something that I've always wanted to do. I'm looking forward to doing it. Um, it's something off cuff for me. I'm not experienced to like people who've been doing it years. For example, if you go and look at like Coogan Cassius, uh, um, Michelle Phelps, Joy Phelps, Michelle Joy Phelps, that's it. They're uh, they're very polished at their job. What they do, uh, obviously Michelle's does she present and stuff now? This year, Coogan does what he does uh, behind the scenes sort of thing. They're very polished and very com comfortable in front of the camera. I'm not. I'm just a bit of a, a bit of a tear away that ended up with a camera. I'm not going to say where I got it from now. But uh, that's about it really, basically. I'm just giving you an introduction and uh, we'll take it, take it from here, I suppose. Uh, so that's that, basically. So I hope you're going to enjoy the, the show or but when it all goes out and that. The guy who's editing it is a guy called Rico Elia. He works in City in, in London. He's called at lead bottom slash right. He's a lovely kid, Enrico, and uh, I hope that you'll follow him on Twitter. And uh, that's about it, really. So, lovely gym, isn't it? I've still got it for 48. Good mate, good. That's things. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. But yeah, we'll have. Hopefully, soon. Yeah. Oh, and you got to stick yourself from us. Well, you can take it. You know what? Once you get it, then you know what to get. I'm going to get it. No, I'm just happy. I'm good, how are you? Alright, I'm going to go by Ashley. He's a regular team trainer. Yeah, good. Boss trainers on there. I'm just going to go 
John's, John's trainers these. Really? I've just borrowed them off John. Have you? Yeah, he's bought them from a man. Nice kids. They call him what? John? What do you call him? Adidas. So he said kicks. 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 No kicks. Kicks. Peter's sport, a nice pair of old school ladies and tunnels. You're very smart. Nice because that was a very nice coat, that. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Peter? All right. Good, Ross. Yeah. Uh, very good, thank you. Not seen you for a bit. It's been a while, yeah. It has been. I think last time we seen you, was January, a bit of lunch on it. It was. You're looking well, mate. Trying, Ross. Uh, since then, we've uh, you, you've made a fight for Yui with Sam Sexton for a British title. Uh, how's things going with that? Yeah, it's all uh, sorted out. We got Nick Hennessy's arranging a uh, head-to-head -head press conference shortly in the next coming weeks. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah, everything's good. It's all underway. Yeah. And how's Yui's training going at the moment? Is he going all right? Yeah, he's he's uh, started back probably about a week ago now. Uh, I've uh, joined the camp today. Yeah. Everything's uh, on target. Yeah. Yeah. Is this the American trainer and that, Peter? Yeah. Yeah, this is this is, uh, this is John. And, uh, How are you doing, John? He's assisting right, me in right, uh, a lot of advanced techniques. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, yeah. I'm Russell. Yeah. John, pleased yeah. to meet you. Nice whereabouts, meet you in, whereabouts in America are you from, John? I'm from uh, north, uh, the north section of America, New York area. Yeah, good yeah. man. Yeah, brilliant. So you're training with Huey then, yeah? I'm working with Huey, working on some uh, new cutting edge advanced techniques. Wow, that's brilliant. Uh, getting better. And you're looking forward to staying in England and that, yeah? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's great. That's brilliant. Terrific. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, Obviously, Yui uh, didn't get a decision against uh, Parker. Uh, very bad decision. Uh, but obviously, he's moved on from that now, hasn't he? Uh, things happen in boxing, don't they? You don't always get a rub at green. You lads never get a good shake, do you? But uh, how's he coping with it now? Is he doing? Is he doing all right? Yeah, it's just. Uh at his age and everything, he's, uh, he's in the right direction, so yeah, no problems at all. Everything's flying ahead. Yeah, because he's only 23, isn't he, you with Peter? He's, uh, yeah, it was his 23rd birthday actually when he fought. Yeah, yeah. So he's, uh, no, he's doing what he's doing well, looking forward to uh, getting back in the ring. When uh, Lennox Lewis uh, won the British title, he were uh, 25. He didn't, do, he didn't have a bad career, did he? I think the British title is nice to have. It's, uh, yeah. it, it, it's become available. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, that will uh, certainly uh, not miss the opportunity. What do you think to Sam Sexton then as a fighter, Peter? Um, I know of Sam, and um, yeah. I think he's done. He's done well. To, he's got a British title and everything. Yeah. Um, he's a decent fighter, Sam. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, it's a good ranking uh, to get that belt, isn't it? It's good to get a good ranking. I've not looked at the rankings, I've no yeah. idea. I know the British yeah. title's a nice belt to get, so yeah. it's a, it'll be, a, it'll be an interesting, it's a good uh, domestic fight. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a good fight as well. Uh, oh, I oh, oh, yeah. To be honest, yeah. He looks in great condition. I've just seen him earlier. Oh, he's just coming to shot now. <laughs> Do you want to see next season, have you? He looks in great condition. Uh, to say he's starting his camp today, he must have been ticking over and that over Christmas period and that period. Yeah, yeah no, he's been ticking over ever since he boxed uh, Parker, so yeah. he's in shape anyway. Yeah. So we're just uh, setting up the camp now. Yeah. John, John got here a week before me. So he's been uh, working away, just, we're just uh, ticking over at the moment, but camp will start to be picking up properly now. Yeah, there's not worse than getting into camp though, is it, out of shape and that. A lot of fighters nowadays, they're going into camp overweight. And there's none of that to have with you, he is, he's always on, on the ball. Yeah, that definitely not. It's no good, it doesn't work, it's unprofessional. And uh, short careers. When they, when yeah, yeah, catches up weird, doesn't it? It does, exactly. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Uh, did you get any, did you get a chance to watch any of boxing over the weekend, uh, Peter? I did. Uh, sort of uh, Wilder with Ortiz. Yeah. I've what do you think fight. to that fight? It's what it is. I think. It, look, you know, Wilder's very vulnerable, but yeah, at the same yeah. t at the same yeah. time, he's very dangerous. Yeah. So he belongs where he is. Yeah. People can pick flaws out, but he. Uh, He's done what he had to do against a skilled Cuban. Yeah. And like I said, I heard somebody comment he had 360 amateur fights. Mm, yeah. So that Cuban could box. Yeah. You know, um, so he did. He did create a lot of problems for a while. Then. Yeah. But he, he, <laughs> he finally uh, come through. He took shots as well. Yeah. So people can look at that and say, oh, you know, I can do this. I, I want you next or whatever. But, Styles make fights. Yeah, yeah. And Wilder, he's learning as well with every fight. Yeah, yeah. He's still learning that job at 14 now, isn't he? Yeah, because 30 of them was non entities. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. basically, but he's been guided right. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, coming, yeah. he's coming into his own. Yeah, so yeah. I think the fight's done in the world of good. He's not. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, it was a good performance. Because nobody else wanted Ortiz, did they? No, they didn't. When Well, Ortiz, uh, two years ago, he was 18 months ago, he was uh, match room, wasn't he? Right. And uh, they were going to feed. They were going to put him in with Joshua, and they put Dave Allen in with uh, Ortiz, and they put Melina in with uh, Joshua, didn't they? Yes. And they didn't fancy it, did they? The, the Ortiz fight, Southpaw, Cuban, and whatnot. Yeah, that's right. So nobody can talk. Nobody can say anything. No. You know because nobody wanted the uh, the Cuban. Yeah, they wanted to wait while they got a bit older, didn't they? I think what it is, is uh, he needs maximum credit, he, he won his fight, he's been in yeah. a tough fight. Anybody who's 24 and 0 and unbeaten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're the they're 24 and 0 for a reason, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, 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 because they can fight. And the funny thing is, he's ten, uh, Wilder's 10 year older than you. 10 year older. So by the time you is, gets a couple of years on his back, they'll all be over ill, won't they, Pete? I think. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Well, yeah, so. well, yeah, yeah. We don't look at it like that. Boxing doesn't work that way. They so. said Otis were over ill, didn't they? And he put a good performance, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. No. He, was, uh, he come in better shape than what I thought he would, the uh, Ortiz, because usually them Cubans are very lazy. Yeah, so yeah. He put the work in. Yeah. It just wasn't enough. Yeah. I think I think the winning and losing of that fight was the age age factor. Yeah. More than anything. Because yeah. Ortiz when the pressure was on, yeah. he couldn't deal with it. Yeah, yeah. He, made that, he looked a bit tired, bumped, didn't he? He looked tired, didn't he? At the end. Yeah. It was a good fight, I enjoyed it. Yeah. It's good to watch. Did you watch uh, any uh, Sheffield show? Uh, Dave Allen? Yeah, I saw Dave Allen's fight. Yeah, got cut, didn't he, at first round, Dave, poor Todd. What a shame, yeah. He, was, uh, he looked in good nick. He did. He looked in very good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's going to fight you in a rematch, you were telling me this morning. So, so he gets another chance, doesn't he, really? So let's hope he can keep in shape, eh? Yeah. He needs to throw a lot more punches, Dave, because, yeah. uh, you know, in that one round there, he lost it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying this morning, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You know, it's like being in shape and looking in the mirror. Yeah. Boxing's about yeah. winning. You don't, yeah. you don't need to lose the rounds. He, listen, he could have been just looking at him, Dave. I don't know. I don't know what strategies are, but you know, yeah. it's pretty similar to what he's always been doing. He's yeah. throw more punches. Yeah. Just to win yeah. fights, you've got to throw punches. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, yeah. yeah.
Yeah. But I wish Dave all the best. He's a lovely kid, you know. It's, yeah. It's yeah. A kid. Listen, for what happened there is a terrible tragedy. You know, one round, eye cut wide open, and it's a bad cut, so it had to be stopped. If they get him a rematch on that again, they've done well by him, haven't they? Match him and them, haven't they? To get him a rematch. Again. I mean, a trilogy. <laughs> we would have said that would be a trilogy. Yeah, I think it's a. Be a good fight, picking you. Really well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how was uh, how have you been ticking over over Christmas and that year? We've been doing a lot of some running work and just pad work and stuff like that. Any sparring? No, no? I've just been working on the job. Just been uh, taking over, staying in shape, and just been uh, working on the mistakes and the flaws and yeah. everything. Uh, it's ready for this camp. Getting yeah. Forward fast. So. I'm looking yeah. forward to this fight, getting this out of the way and uh, move on to the next. Are we going to see a, a different uh, Yui Fury this time? Uh, is it, uh, you might be tweaking a few things here and there. Yeah, 100%. You'll definitely yeah. see a different uh, Yui right. Fury. And you'll see him uh, travel. You have a bit of a, a different demeanour about you since the last time I've seen you. <laughs> you seem a bit more serious. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy what... Uh, Shook you up a bit, hasn't it, that decision, hasn't it? It's crazy what time can do. Changes, yeah, yeah. It changes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I've got a different mind frame now. Yeah. Why has? Yeah. And it's a uh, strictly business now. My eyes have opened up wide. Yeah. And, uh, now I just can't wait now just to get in the ring. I'm sick of talking and stuff. Just get out of your get system. Get the fights and uh, one after the other. Yeah. Hopefully, you get another three to four fights in this year. Yeah. And you're not really bothered about all your fight now. You just want to fight everybody. Just you're not there, bothered. Get, get back to the top. Because there's a lot of people on social media at the moment are saying that uh, a lot of people out there are doing a lot of talking but they're not doing any fighting. Yeah, 100% people talk, we're not talking, we take the fights and we fight anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. 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 The tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, metro area. And John's, John's been here a week now and he's here to train. 
Yui to get Yui even fitter than he were for his last fight. Uh, how did you first get into boxing, John? Well, I got into boxing. I was uh, working with a uh, boxing manager, just doing regular personal training, and uh, he uh, asked me if I'd like to work with one of his boxers, and I said sure. Needed to put some weight on, and so I started out with Shannon Briggs. Uh, came off the national amateur championships, weighed about 201 pounds, and we had to put some some muscle on him. So uh, I worked with Shannon first, and I've also worked with Ray Mercer. And then I fell in love with boxing, and I just started working with, with, with boxers. I, uh, I did a little work with Bobby Chez, uh, Bobby Lewis, um, you know, a lot of heavyweights. Uh, so I've been in the game for a while, and uh, I'm kind of making a little bit of a comeback here uh, with Huey. And um, I'm going to get him in, in better shape. I mean, he's in great shape, but we're going we're gonna to really push it, and we're going to do some other... Uh, types of uh, cutting edge training techniques with Huey to, you know, really, uh, really in increase and in improve on what he's doing already uh, with his father, Peter. Yeah. Well, is that, like, is that sort of stuff that you do, like, similar to, uh, like, what Mackie Schultz then did for Michael Spinks and people like that? Well, I mean, Mackie Shields Stone is, a, is an icon in this, uh, in this industry, and, um, but, you know, things he did with Michael Spinks, things have evolved since then, but I think he's most recently worked with Andre Ward. I don't know exactly what he did with Andre Ward, but, you know, I have a certain way that I do things in a certain way uh, that I use my techniques to... Uh, yeah. Get the get the fighters ready. Uh, I usually don't talk too much about them. Uh, hopefully, when Huey gets in the ring, uh, with my help, his father's coaching and, and and all that, you'll you'll see the results. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Oh, it's been great meeting you. Yeah? Nice to meet you as well. Obviously, I'm going to uh, see you bouncing about over the next you know two months, and uh, hopefully. You will uh, get the job done. I can see him getting the job done, but it's all about doing everything right, isn't it? Like you said, it's all about doing everything right. Uh, Fight someone in camp, did you say? Doing it proper, and uh, and, and uh, yeah. Huey's going to be a world champion. I, I have no doubt about it. Well, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. All right, well, listen, I'll, uh, I'll see you knocking about, and you keep on trucking. All right, you too. Take care, mate. Take care. Sparring partners uh, lined up, Peter, for uh, training camp. Are they coming yeah. in? Are you flying them in, or are you having to go out there? Or I'll be flying a few in, yeah. yeah. Um, I think we start on the 19th of March sparring. Yeah, yeah. And we're bringing them in. Three or four sparring partners. Yeah, yeah. All top-notch guys in that, yeah. It's what we need, really. Yeah. All yeah. Different, different types. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. There's plenty of uh, sparring going on. Yeah, that's good. You know what? What amazes me is that people keep saying you should fight this person, that per and that person. He's 23 years of age, like I said earlier. 23. Lennox won the belt when he was 25, didn't he? British title. So I think that he's got time on his hands, hasn't he, Peter? Are you with me? He's ready for a world title tomorrow. Yeah, actually. yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's this, this time is not a building process. It's because we yeah. can't get the fights. Yeah. So let me tell you. Nobody wants to be calling him out yeah. because they're not fighting him, are they? No, no, they don't call him out, do they? None of no. them are the top so guys. Let's have a real reality check. Yeah. He's not on a on a comeback. 
he's not building his career, he already, he's already he's been a there. world champion. Yeah. He'll yeah. fight. If we could get a world title for Yui tomorrow with any of the heavyweights, yeah. he'd be doing it. Yeah. You know? So we've got to take what, what's on the table. Yeah. That's why that's what we're doing now. Not mm. because he's not ready or yeah. we're building yeah. him back up. It's where it is. He's avoided, isn't he, basically? Look, he's got things to improve on, you know, and uh, that's what he's been doing over the Christmas. That's what he's been in the gym, and that's what we're looking to. Uh, in the next fight, we'll tell a story, just how much he's uh, improved on the things that he needed to improve on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So it should be good. Yeah, I will. I will look at you. His record. I forgot his name on 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 way here, but you fought a really good guy when you were young, didn't you? When you first started out as a pro. I think, do you remember the guy's name? Or you fought, and they all said, "Oh." He shouldn't be in with him, and I think did you stop him? There were a guy early on in your career, and they said it was highly ranked Peter, were it now? Oh, the Denko. That were him, yeah. And uh, went the full distance. Yeah, is that the one? That's the one, the full distance, and that. And they said that uh, a lot of people were saying that you shouldn't have been in with him, and you scored him, didn't you? And uh, he had a good record, didn't he? Well, yeah, you look at him. He boxed him when he was 19. Yeah, yeah, that were it. Yeah, 19. 19. Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, you know, Rodenko went the full went the full 12 with uh, Povetkin, not strong yeah. at all. That were it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and he, I think he was coming off one loss against Lucas Brown, yeah, which was a controversial loss. No. And uh, was that yeah. not long after you got the gold medal, you because you're a decorated world amateur champ gold medalist, aren't you? It was about a year after. About a year after, yeah. You must be about 18 when you won that, then, yeah. Yeah. So you fought him when you were 19, then. Yes, you were you were basically willing to take out all comers on them, weren't you? Yeah. And win this game to be uh, serious and go straight to the top. Yeah. And my dad said, we're not, we're not here now just to uh, play games or just take a step back. Yeah. We're ready for World Time tomorrow. Yeah, because a lot of them are just treading water, aren't they? Wanting to pick wages up. They don't want to test themselves. Yeah, 100%. I'm just looking forward now to the next fight. Yeah. We'll see the progress of what we've been doing over Christmas. So yeah. I just want to fight at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's brilliant.
as well, Peter. Good. Nice, nice to, to see you, mate. Yeah, good to see you, mate. Well, I'll come and see you. Uh, week two of you is camp. Yeah. Everything going all right? Apart from having a headache. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You've got a headache, mate. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. You try and do. Boxing's an headache. <laughs> Right, uh, just going to go through these uh, questions with you, uh, see what you think. Uh, right, if you could have turned back the clock to the start of Yui's last training camp, what would you do differently, Peter? Um, nothing, nothing could be done differently. He, uh, he's where he's at, he was prepared right. And, uh, it's all about uh, development. You know, there were things in his training camp he wasn't doing, and the things that he w that we've seen in the sparring, he was he, w he was the same during the fight. He, he couldn't do exactly what I wanted him to do. Um, mainly getting his shots off properly, using the backhand a lot more. Being, you know, coming off his feet, planting good shots in. You know, he wasn't able to do that. So. Got nothing to do with the training camp. The training camp was perfect, you know, but this is a world title fight. You know, he wasn't able to uh, do the things that he really needed to do. So it's all it's all uh, it's all stages development process. Yeah, I'm just trying to screen, turn the screen off so I can see it. Yeah, it's. Uh you is a world class athlete though, isn't he? 23 year old. I've just seen him in the gym today. He's a specimen of a lad, isn't he? He's got all the attributes for an heavyweight fighter the reach, the height, the yeah. time on his side, and that. There's no rush, is there, really? Well, he's, you know, what, um, what, what, who do you know that's a young professional heavyweight on his 23rd birthday fights for the WBO World Championship? Well, when you look at it at that age, you're looking at your Ali and so Mike Tyson's at that age, aren't you? Very similar to that. Ali were 22, Tyson were 21, and Ali 21. Exactly. In that bracket. Are you talking over, what, 30 years? Yeah, yeah. Three decades? Tyson, wasn't it? Ali was 16, 1964, yeah, Exactly. So there's not many. No, no. He's got time on his side, hasn't he? So he's done, uh, he, he's in a marvellous position, and he, he's done fabulous. Just one second. No, no problem. Hi, Dominic. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> um, let me see, weekend. Yeah, I can do Saturday. That's fixed Saturday uh, mid afternoon. But what I'll do, I can, I can come and see you because I'll be, I'll be passing through. So I'll be passing through Manchester anyway. Send me, send me your postcode, Dominic, and your uh, address, and I'll be, and I'll send you a time Saturday. That'll do. Look forward to it. See you soon. And you. Sorry about that. No problem. I'll go on to the next question. What was uh, the other question? Oh, the first question was about you. Uh, if you could have turned the clock back. No. Nope. You just don't. I don't do. I don't you do didn't get regrets. Decision, did you? No. No. I didn't get the decision, but that's not our fault, is but it? Everything went right apart from the, the establishment sort of thing, wasn't More it? More or less, yeah. 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 Right, uh, the next question is: Your fighters are renowned for being 15-round plus fighters. Why have you decided to bring in a strength and conditioning coach? Because they all do fit fighters, because they all do the rounds, don't they? Right. I don't have strength and conditioning coaches. Oh, right. I've had, I've employed four or five in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And they can't do the job. Yeah. Every one of them I've let go. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're not up to my standards. Yeah. I condition the fighters myself. Yeah. I watch everything. I've got a guy with us now, and he calls himself a strength and conditioner, but he's not here for that purpose. Oh, right. he's, he's, not, he's, he's not a strength and conditioner. Oh, he he does that, yeah. but that's not why he's here. Oh, yeah. He's here for uh, advanced techniques. Oh, he's always doing advanced techniques. So he's not here for strength and conditioning, weights, because I don't do bodybuilding. Yeah. You know, it's a different sport. Yeah. Yeah. So. I've seen, you heard, it, heard the old saying, haven't you? I've heard many a duck fart. It's all crap, really. 
<laughs> everybody's an expert, everybody's a professor. I want to get them in the gym and they're doing it. They're either killing the fighter stone dead. Yeah. yeah? It's all shit really. Mm. Everybody wants to get the face on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. I look at uh, I look at what I need and there's only look. The fighters are conditioned mainly with myself, I oversee everything. But the guy I've got in now, he's from America. He's very uh, he's very skilled in a certain level of field. And he is doing the strength and conditioning as well. Yeah. But I'm overseeing everything. Yeah. He tells me what he does before he's going to do it. And uh, we tweak it and I just tell him what I think. And basically, it has to go the way I want it to go. So, it's not he isn't no strength and conditioning. I don't need a strength and conditioning. They all, do, they all do the rounds easy, don't they? Yeah, exactly, what do yeah. you want them for? Yeah, yeah. Not one of my fighters ever got in the ring, I can't do the rounds. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Not needed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are you his best attributes as an heavyweight boxer? I think he's got it all round. He's a fantastic talent. You know, he's loose, he's supple, takes a shot well, um, ticks all the boxes. He's just got to be a little bit more assertive with his shots, he's got to throw more. He's got to set his feet down, he's got to put more power behind the shots. Yeah. These are more or less simple tweaks, really. Yeah. You know, they're, not, they're, not big, uh, they're not big demands. Yeah. You know, so he's, he's there, isn't he? So over the uh, next coming year now, he's, uh, he'll just tweak them, um, he'll tweak them floors, and uh, he's ready to go. Yeah. You never stop learning in boxing. Yeah. Even when he tweaks them, he's not going to be the full package. Nobody is. Boxing, you just keep learning and learning, whether it be in the mind or whether it be physical. Both. The mind's got to adapt before the body can adapt. The mind tells everything, controls it. So it's all about maturity, growing up, and doing less is doing more. If, 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 if you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for me, it's, uh, it's not about being a trainer with a tracksuit on in the gym. It's about being savvy with what you're doing. Yeah. And a lot of it, you can, be a, you can be a clever bastard, yeah? And think you know it all, you don't. I think the thing is, sometimes most of the difficult things can be the most simplest when you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why less is more. Yeah. When you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember that. Right. Uh, why did you choose to fight Sam Sexton over other options? What? There was no other options. Uh, nobody would take the fight. We couldn't get him a fight. Yeah, he is hard to match. Isn't he? So, I don't want to run in and he refused it. You know, it's yeah, never yeah, happened yeah. for yeah, day, won't we? I don't blame the fighters, yeah. whether it's the teams or whatever. You just don't want it, so yeah. we move on. Yeah. Sam Sexton needs maximum credit because he's took the fight. Yeah. So, we're happy with it. We're happy it's a British title fight. He's a current British champion. So, yeah. it's a good uh, fight for TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Uh, what next for you here following the Sexton fight? That's obviously if you wins a section fight, yeah. What next? Uh, we're looking to put him straight back uh, back in action in July. Yeah. So he's gonna be busy. Yeah. He'll fight uh, he'll fight three times I think this year for sure. Yeah, well, that's good that, yeah. Yeah. Busy. He's gonna get busy yeah. He's not been busy, has he? But he will be busy this year. He's busy now. Look, he's come off a world title fight. Yeah. He's uh, trained all year, so he had the injury problem. So he's back now, isn't he? So he's been ticking over anyway. He's not somebody who's inactive. Yeah. He's not somebody that hasn't been in the gym yeah. since Parker's fight. Probably had two weeks off. Yeah. He's back in the gym. Yeah. So he's been working on the stuff he didn't do. And uh, this time, looking forward to the progress. Oh, Brilliant. Uh, when do you feel that Hewitt is ready to face the likes of Joshua and Wilder? Yesterday. He's ready now then, yeah. He's ready the 23rd of September. Yeah. Oh, 017. Yeah. Fort Parker. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. as good as world champions what's out there. Yeah. As you'll see when he fights Joshua on the 31st of May. Yeah. He's ready. Yeah. Ready for all the elite heavyweights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Uh, you is still very young for a heavyweight. What advantage does that pose? It poses many advantages because look where he is today, right now. He is at the top of his game. You know, whether people want to admit it or not, probably he's not as flamboyant or as well known as all the current crop of heavyweights. But he's there. <coughs> He's he's right in the, he's right in the mix at 23 years of age, and this year he'll cement his position properly because yeah. I've no doubt he's going to be mandatory again. Yeah. yeah. 
Your fighters have a unique style which is so effective. Do you feel that heavyweights are currently too reliant on power? I think so. Fighters, uh, especially the heavyweight division, they do rely on a lot of power. Um, you've got to have that skill set. Like I've always said, boxing is an art and it's a skill loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you can have as big a punch as you want, you can have as big of muscles as you like. Yeah, if you can't yeah. hit the target, what good is it? Yeah. And the same rule, yeah, there is no muscles on your chin and it's a true saying. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you get it, you're gone. Yeah. That's why I say fighters ain't got this, ain't got that. All heavyweights can bang. Yeah, yeah. Oh, clip, yeah, right? yeah. I remember when Yui fought Arius, yeah? George Arius. Yeah. He was like, 78 fights, 68 wins or something. Yeah. Hadn't fought anybody special, but he'd been in with good fighters. Yeah, yeah. Fought the pool, Levs and all that. Always gone the 12 rounds. And uh, Yui was weighing light at the time. He was only 15 stone three. And he fought him at Derby. And if you look at that fight back on the video, when he fought George Arias, I think the second or the third round, he come off the ropes, Yui, caught him with two hooks. Arias was gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yui never had the experience. Yui started load, <coughs> load, loading up. Mm. It's all about experience. Yeah. Has he got the power? Looking at a guy that hadn't been stopped in 68 fights. Yeah. Yui nearly done him in. Yeah. The second round. Yeah. At 15 stone. Of course he can punch. Yeah. And you're looking at a different kid now today, who was struggling to make weight when he was a young kid. Yeah. Yeah. He was big, tall, but immature. He was like, hey, don't forget, he was 18 years of age when he turned professional. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now it's a case where he had to eat loads to put weight on. Yeah. Now he's got to eat very less to to. To lose weight. Yeah. yeah. So this is a genuine heavyweight. He walks around about 17 and a half stone. He's a different Yui to then, isn't he? Now oh, he's, yeah. he's a man. Yeah. He's grown up, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's got yeah. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. So you, we've had to deal with a young boy in a heavyweight division. Yeah. yeah? Oh, we're and, and look, yeah, there's that as well. And look what he's achieved. Yeah. So he's still, whatever which way, bends, whatever, impressive mm. fights, non-impressive fights. He's there. Yeah. He's had a le he's had a good learning. He's had a good grounding. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we've done with him. He's been managed properly. Imagine him at 28. Oh, Let's not forget as well when he fought Andre Redenko. He was 25 and 1, and he was 19 years of age. Yeah, he was 14 fight that one, and he was 14 yeah. fight. And look what happened there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, you were an uh, underdog, wasn't he, in that fight? So they also would have a match, didn't they, in that one, didn't they? If I listen to pundits, yeah, if I yeah. listen to what the public said, nothing would transpire. Yeah, no, I don't, get done, would it? <laughs> I don't listen to nothing yeah, when anybody's yeah. got to tell me. Yeah. I listen to myself and listen to good advice. Yeah. I'm not interested in an expert telling me what my fighter can do and what he can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, many of today's heavyweights don't do the fundamentals correctly. Why, why do you think that is, Peter? Is it a society problem where they want everything now? They're not prepared to put the time in? What do you, what do you think that is? Or is it a bad era for heavyweights? Well, it's like you said, a lot of it's on strength and conditioning. Yeah. They're like, they've lost the plot with it. Yeah. And hitting the heavy back. Mm. They think they can bull in and take shots. You can't. Yeah. Ultimately, look, when you pit all these fighters against each other, yeah, and eventually turns out, the one with the most skill set will win. And I'll tell you why that is, because boxing, that's analysed boxing. Boxing is box clever. Yeah. That's what boxing stands for. Yeah, yeah. Boxing is a science, it's an elite science. Mm. Yeah? It's ring craft. Yeah. Yeah? It's knowing your job. It's that slight bit of movement, the relaxedness of it, where you're throwing yeah. punches, not loading up. You know, boxing's an art, it's a skill. It's the sweet art, so that's called sweet science, yeah? Yeah. And Mayweather's a craft of, Mayweather is the king of that craft. Yeah. Because he learned his craft. And the many tried and they all failed, didn't they? Yeah. So yeah. it's like this. You know, look in Ali in Ali's day, you know, look what he come against. You know, look what happened with him and George Foreman. Yeah. And look what George Foreman done twenty years later to the current young crop. Yeah. Went knocked out Michael, Michael Moore, right? it, didn't he? he knocked out Michael Moore, spark out, what was he, the new IBF champion of the world at 40, 46. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Ali in his prime, non-puncher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really a cruiserweight of today. Yeah, yeah. Against a legitimate heavyweight, six foot five, yeah. George Foreman, 18 plus stone. Yeah. Look what happened. Yeah. There's sweet science again. Yeah. And you know what comes with sweet science? Brain cells. Yeah. 
yeah. extra brain cells in your forehead. Yeah? Because in his toolbox. Listen, yeah. you're a thick twat. Yeah. What can you where are you gonna learn that sweet science? Yeah. Think what you've got to be. You've got to be articulate, you've got to be clever. Yeah. As, as I'm giving the instructions, fighters gotta have the ability to absorb them. Yeah. If I've got a thick cunt in the corner, yeah, yeah. you can't understand jack shit. He ain't yeah. going anywhere, is he? No, he ain't no. So no. it's a mixture. Yeah. Fighters gotta be intelligent too. Listen, you need a highly intelligent fighter to understand what he's being told. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Right, uh, if you had any advice for young heavyweight boxers today, what would it be, Peter? Young heavyweight boxers coming through. Yeah. Enjoy what you're doing. Uh, enjoy what you're doing. Work hard, listen, be dedicated, and don't be don't be afraid to try new things. And you know, and you need a very good team at the back of you. So that's what I say to any new fighter coming through. You need a proper team who's dedicated, that's going to support you, and um, get you the right fights. So yeah. that's very important. Yeah. And you know, if you want it bad enough, and you learn, you study things, anything can happen. Why have you decided to focus predominantly training heavyweight boxers? Or has it just been how it's happened for you? It's how it's happened because yeah. it's been family. Yeah. Um, but I've trained other fighters. Yeah. Um, as you know now, I've been, yeah, yeah. I've been working, training. I trained Savannah Marshall for her first fight. Yeah. She's out. She's in the gym now. Yeah. I'm helping her out. Yeah. Uh, she can punch, can't she? She can. She punches like a mule. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She can Peter McDonough. Yeah, he's yeah. a good friend of mine anyway. Yeah. He's, he's training like, hard, Peter. Isn't yeah, he? he's light middle. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had my nephew Phil Fury. Yeah. He was a light middle. Yeah. I had my other, uh, my other nephew. Uh, he was called Dempsey. He done a fight with me. Yeah. He was uh, super middle. Yeah. And then there was uh, Ty. Ah. Yeah, there's Ty. Ty Clifton Mitchell's son. Yeah, he's uh, he's working with us as well. He's training hard. He's training hard. Yeah. And what he's doing, he's having a few weeks here with me, a few weeks with his dad. Yeah. Me and his dad were very close friends. Yeah. So he's working with me as well. He's he's gonna be he's gonna be light heavy. So weights are relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he can punch. He can. Uh, Serious talent. Yeah. Uh, which trainers do you rate currently and former greats, you know, to past and present at the moment? Eddie Fudge, Angelo Dundee. They're uh, the old school ones, yeah. Yeah, you know, great trainers. There's nothing great trainers. I don't think there's a bad trainer. And what I mean by that is, they put the lives and souls in it. I'm not just talking about some idiot that's come from nowhere, wants to get his face on the TV. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of fame seekers, aren't there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm on about, you know, you, people who's dedicated because I tell you why, it's a full time job and it's a difficult job. Oof. So all trainers need max credit because I know what goes into it. Yeah, it's a, it's so a it's hard not, job. It's not an easy job. There's, there's, some, there's some top trainers out there. I think England's flying. There's some very clever people out there. Yeah. What tra What advice would you have for young trainers coming up, Peter? You know, young lads who are just getting their seconds license and going for their trainers license. What would advice would you have for them? Just to stick at it, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, what 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 makes you a trainer? Because you've got a seconds license. Yeah. Don't you have to go for that first before you go for trainers, man? If you pass your test, does it mean you can really drive a car? Well, no, it doesn't, does it? Because people crash totally straight away, don't they? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. it's rubbish. Yeah. It's official, isn't it? Yeah. Officially, you need a license. Yeah. That doesn't make you a trainer. Yeah, yeah. It makes you a textbook sort of a trainer. Yeah, yeah. You learn as you go along, is that what you're saying, Peter? Yeah, it takes okay. time. It's knowledge. Yeah. It's knowledge. It's a lifetime of knowledge, and you pick it up and you, and you go along with it. Yeah. If you were training uh, Anthony Joshua and Wilder, what would you, what advice would you give for them? What would you focus on? I know it's coming now. <laughs> I wouldn't actually because 
I've got no advice for them yeah. because what they're doing, they're doing everything right. Yeah. They're world champions. Yeah. Yeah. Who am I to say yeah. Yeah, they're winning the They've got good trainers. Yeah. Yeah. They've all got strong attributes. McCracken and Mark Beal and they do they know what they're doing, don't they? They've been just a bit. Yeah, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> Yeah. They're doing everything properly, so yeah, yeah. full yeah. credit to them. You know, look, maximum respect to all of them mm. and the fighters, the world champions. This is a hard business. Mm. They need to make a living. Yeah. And they're, they're a success story. Yeah. Any young fighter, a young man that's come from the streets yeah. and could become a world champion is a massive success story. Yeah. And the country needs to get behind them. Mm. So that's take all the rest of the bullshit out of it. It's what it is, you know. Wish people well. Yeah. Wish them the best of success, and that's what I wish for everybody. Yeah, that's brilliant. Over the past few weeks, we've uh, we've seen Saul Alvarez and gold medalist Tony Yoko fail or miss doping tests. Is there a problem with performance and syndrome in boxing? <coughs> What's happened to Tony Yoko? That's the that's the Olympian, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the Olympian the gold kid. medalist. Yeah, the French kid. Yeah, he's missed it. Missed his what, is it fourth time. He's missed it. They've done him. They've banned him, haven't they, uh, Yoko? So. No idea. No, it's, uh, I can't currently comment on it because what yeah, happened to yeah. us? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very political. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I think he's. I think a lot of the times he's face fits. Yeah, it's. Uh, what do you think to the current state of boxing at the moment as regards where it were ten years ago? It's on everybody's lips in it at the moment, isn't it? I will say this though: people should only have products. Applied products, where I say applied, because we use applied, but obviously not meaning like that. People should use certified products, and if, if they're found to be cheating, they should be banned. Yeah, straight away. But it's cheating, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. I look at it like this. Do you know, years ago, you know, like in 1920s, didn't they do like 20 rounds? Or, or that with Jack Johnson's era, they did loads of rounds, didn't they? But you don't need gear. Yeah. You don't need it. That's for bodybuilders and looking good in your body. Yeah, What's yeah. it for? Yeah. They don't, don't mean shit. Yeah. If you know your job with your athlete and you're training, yeah. Yeah. you do 12 rounds. What's that for? Yeah. What does it do anyway? I, I don't, it's I must don't, be in here, I think. It's got to be. It's not doing anything. It doesn't yeah. do jack shit anymore. Yeah. For a bodybuilder, a weightlifter, yeah. somebody wants a pile of muscle on, he can't gain weight, he can't. I don't know. I don't yeah. know what it does, but it's yeah. certainly not going to help you. Skill set, is it? Is it going to give you more brains? <laughs> yeah. It's not, is it? Yeah. It's not going to give you a better eye boxing so, IQ, But is they it? do it. But then again, I don't know because look, bike riders, they're doing it, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You've got boxers doing it. Weightlifters. They're obviously doing it for some uh, some advantage. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's brilliant. And, uh, what else was you going to say, sorry? No, that was it. Basically, that was it. Uh, uh, got a good set of questions there. No, I was just going to say, you know, back in the day, they never, they just ate the meat and the veg and that, didn't they, 1920s, and, and they still did loads of rounds, didn't they? Whereas yeah. today, they feel like they have to have this and have to have that, and and amino acids and all these shakes and all that, they never had them back in the day, did they? No, they never. We use all that. We yeah. use the amino yeah. acids, uh, yeah. Yeah. BCAs and yeah. protein shakes. Yeah. It's all advanced, isn't it? Yeah. It's advanced techniques. Yeah. You know, you got to put some of the old school, old school stuff with the advanced stuff. Yeah. But ultimately, it comes down to this. Fighter can be in the best condition he wants. Mm. He can have everything under the sun. If he's not good enough, yeah. he's not good enough, is he? Yeah. Yeah. But if you're good enough, then you can polish the diamond. Yeah, yeah. But if you've got a piece of coal in your backyard, <laughs> can, you, can you polish that up? You can't, can you? Don't, you know, we're calling throw it on fire. No. <laughs> there's, a, there's a true saying, yeah? Go to a racing track. And have a look at them fine race horses, yeah. right? Yeah. Beautiful specimens, yeah? yeah. Then go and have a look at a cart horse. Yeah. It's a different build, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The race horse is lean, yeah. it's got lean long legs, yeah. very thin at the bottom, yeah. Yeah. muscular around the shoulders, built for speed. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's look at a car horse. Yeah. It's got a pair of feet like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's heavy set. Yeah. Right? Similar to animals to humans, really. You can just look at everything in a similar fashion. Yeah. You know, a lot of friends of mine in America that used to fight fighting chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Like game game cocks, they call them. Yeah. They spare them up and stuff. Yeah. Right. Now you've got a big farm cock, right? Yeah. Which is like they call them Rhode Island Reds, whatever they're called. And they're like this big. 
and they've got a chest on them like that. And if it run into you, it'll break your leg. Yeah. yeah? Now you've got a game fighting chicken. Yeah. Yeah? From being that big, it's this big. Yeah? It's slender. Yeah. Right? What happens? Does the slender one win? Well, the big thing jumps up as high as this table yeah. and tries to hit it. Yeah. What does the game cop do? It dips down, yeah. turns around, spares it right through the head and kills it in one shot. Never. <laughs> that's look at that's look at that. Let's move on from that. Let's look at fighting dogs. Yeah? Yeah, fighting dogs, yeah. Let's look at fighting dogs. Yeah. You know when you're on about the chickens, without Roy Jones? No. No, oh right, yeah. Yeah, I know, but he does them as well. Yeah, Roy he, Jones. Yeah, and Roy Jones, if you're listening to ever listen to this. Because <laughs> Roy Jones watches these. Yeah. You'll relate to it, Roy, and yeah. full respect to you, legend, yeah, yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah. Now the fighting dogs. Yeah. They're bred fighting dogs. They got short legs. Yeah. Yeah. The Compact, short to the floor, the stocky, but they got loads of agility. Yeah, you pit an American pit bull terrier against any other type of dog. Nine times out of ten, it'll kill the other dog, no matter how big it is. Yeah, because they got brains. They're clever. I seen a dog fight once. Yeah, it was actually our own dog. It's a family dog. We had an American pit bull terrier years ago, and. Uh, I was about 16 or 17, and uh, this guy had a big old Alsatian with long hair, well, black hair. Anyway, my dog was in the in the car, and went everywhere with me. This dog. So uh, anyway, so the, the guy must have owned the black dog. He's Alsatian, and this German Shepherd it was up here. He must have let my dog out of the car. Yeah. Anyway, the dog's got at it outside, and there's at it for good. Four or five minutes. So a few people's come round. We've come outside having a look here. Yeah? Now the dog I've got, his dog, dogs rear up on the back legs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now his dog is so much bigger than mine, he's on top of it. Yeah. So I'm looking at the dog I've got here yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, this this, this big thing's got ten stone on top yeah. of my dog. Yeah, yeah. Mine's gonna come unstuck in a minute. Yeah. And, and the dog I've got, the American pit bull, keeps biting air. It can't get a grip because yeah. the, the dog's got long hair. Yeah. And the other dog, this Alsatian, is biting lumps out of mine. Yeah. Yeah. So mine's coming off the worst. Yeah. yeah. But it's not because watch what happens. Yeah. He's moving him. He's turning him. Whatever. Right. And the other dog is starting to get tired. Yeah. So all of a sudden, then this pit bull terrier, he's come down off his legs. Yeah. Amazing how he did it, it's natural instinct, yeah? He comes off his legs with a big dog when he gets him tired, yeah? After about, this is going on two or three minutes, which is a long time for dogs, yeah? yeah? yeah, oh, yeah. Anyway, he goes underneath his front legs, yeah. yeah? Goes straight under the back, right? And where the dog's private parts are, yeah. there's no air, is there? No. Right? He, done a, he, he, he went under the dog's front legs, yeah? Right underneath the dog, yes. turned over on his belly, yeah. Yeah, the American pit bull terrier I had, yeah? Yeah. And grabbed him, his undercarriage underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Gripped him there, yeah. right? And then spun the Alsatian over on his back. Yeah. Yeah? Killed him. No. Oh well, no, the other mad dog was squealing, so the next thing, this guy picks up a door. He picks up a door and it's my dog over the back with him. Yeah? And takes a lump out of the dog's back like that. So anyway, gets the dog separated, his dog was his dog was still alive, but he needed a vet. Yeah. So hence me and him had to have a fight. Mm. And I'll say this, he was nowhere near as good as his dog. <laughs> yeah. He was. Jeez, bastard. Hit me dog hit the dog with a piece of wood. So they both ended up at vets, both at dog. He fucking needed a vet, alright. <laughs> So, um, so the dog had a fight, and then me and him had a fight after. <laughs> had a good day then for you, then, wasn't it? It was all right, yeah. Considering I went in to see my family, and the dog was in the car with my narrow business. <laughs> <laughs> what they didn't understand was the dog could have a fight, so could the owner as well. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one, that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I didn't know you were into dogs and that, Peter. I loved animals as a young kid growing up from from travelling cultures. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. We always had dogs. It was my brother Huey's dog. My brother Huey had it. He, uh, he bought the dog. He was called Leonard. It was my brother Huey's dog, but obviously I was always at home because I was the youngest, so I spent more time with the dog. Yeah. So, and that's the way it was. We always had, growing up, dogs, <coughs> chickens. Always uh, outside of everywhere. It was animal mad. So, uh, yeah. Horses and that. With horses. And Never really spent much time with the horses, no. but the people around us did. A lot of travels had horses, yeah. But you we, ever go up trap or big feet? I've never been in my life. Never? I'm no. surprised about that. The people could say, I'm not a thoroughbred traveller, couldn't they? Because <laughs> I've never been to Appleby. <laughs> yeah. But I've never been to Appleby because I'm not a horseman, that's all. Yeah, yeah. We've got a horse. We race them, don't they, up and down, trots in it, what they call it, don't they? Somebody showed me the other day on, on, on my WhatsApp, yeah, a wagon. I don't know if you've seen it. It was the best bow top wagon I've ever seen. Yeah. It was all gold guiltage, yeah? yeah. And it was. It was a video, it was an auction, it made 85 grand. Jesus. Yeah. It's supposed to be worth 200 plus thousand. I can believe it. Yeah. I've never seen a wagon like it. Yeah. Beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. A proper thing that. But you need you need a good place to put them, don't you? Yeah, yeah, to protect them. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. So we've talked about dogs, we've talked about horses. And boxing. boxing. We've had a good chat, haven't we? We'll get all this yeah. in, get all this in the film. Right then mate, well, thanks for your time Peter, really enjoyed that, and we'll have a must. bite now eh? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Take three, my fault, we had a phone issue and a technical problem. Right, uh, second week of camp, you eh? Uh, how's it going? Everything's going well, I already feel fit and that and strong, so it's just now it's just taping up on the skill side and just uh, put the fight. We've got eight weeks to go. Yeah, it can't come soon enough. That's brilliant. We've got some questions I want to ask you, boxing related stuff. Uh, I'll just plough straight in after my couple of delays. Unprofessional. Uh, Yui, following your world title challenge, what have you learned? Uh, I've learned a lot of things. Going through a lot of Christmas and things I didn't do in the fight and stuff like that. You've just got to. You just gotta take it on the chin and just say, yeah, you didn't do this and you didn't do this. And now just get on with it and prove and don't let them things come. And that's why I've been working on all the Christmas and yeah. you'll see it come at the 12th of May. Yeah. What the difference will be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Has anything been different in this camp to the last camp? They always change every camp's always different. Mm -hmm. Because every camp you always learn with experience. Yeah. So you change the camps to be better. So, yeah, there's a lot of changes always. Because you're 23. You were 23 when you fought for World Tide to learn. Off top of my head and looking on internet last night, there's only been an handful of fighters that have been in that bracket going for world titles at that age: Ali, Mike Tyson, Abi Hyde, and Floyd Patterson. So you're in good company there, aren't you, at a young age? Yeah, 100%. I'll still be young when I do win a world title as well, so I do believe that. It's just now, it's just getting back with them the right, in the right timing. Yeah. Do you think it came for you too early, or do you think politics in the sport didn't let you have the belt? Listen, there's a lot to do with politics, but I would have liked uh, at least uh, a couple of warm-up fights. Yeah. I just come from a two-year uh, illness. Yeah. I would have yeah. liked to uh, have uh, two warm-up fights and have that belt. But, it's, uh, you get what's in front of you. I'm not afraid of a challenge, and I'm yeah. not afraid to have a fight. If it's there, it's there. Yeah. Ring Magazine uh, website recently said that uh, you're one of the only heavyweights out there that's not avoiding anybody. You, you, you're taking on all comers, and that you're there yeah, to that, fight, aren't you? A lot of them don't want to fight anybody, do they? 100%. At the end of the day, in this game to win. Yeah. And, and fight anyone, because when you, when you believe you're the best, you just got to go out there and fight the best. Yeah. So that's what it is, you've got to get your way back up there now and be able to take anyone. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you have a new strength and conditioning coach. Are you feeling the benefits of this guy? Yeah, he seems to know his stuff and just working on a few more techniques and stuff like that. So yeah, he's a good guy and uh, yeah, you'll see you'll see all my difference and improvements on May 12th because trust me, it'll be a big improvement. Yeah, good. Yeah, I've met him, he's a nice, he's a nice kid, yeah. 
Have you changed your sparring partners for this camp from the last? What what will be different? Are you... There's always different sparring partners, but it's always it's always the same intense, one in, one out, four or yeah. five guys. Yeah. It's always tough. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say are Sam Sexton's strengths and weaknesses you have? Um, he's a Sam Sexton, he's a good British fighter, he's obviously been around for a bit. Yeah. But yeah, listen, you can't take nothing away from him. I've got no, no uh, animosity against the fella. But then the day is strictly business. Yeah. Uh, you'll see his weaknesses and his faults. Yeah. I've gone down there because I do believe I'm, a, I'm an elite fighter. Yeah. So yeah. you'll see them weaknesses. The bookies have got you uh, as an overwhelming favourite for the fight. Do you agree with that? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, because your you pedigree, obviously, you're a, you're a world, world amateur champion, gold medalist, weren't you, as well? Yeah, well what's the odds on that? Are you 1 to 4, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, 1 to 4. I'm not really up, but probably something like that, wouldn't it? Yeah, so you'd have to put 400 quid on to win 100 on you, wouldn't <laughs> you? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what were I about? Many, many fighters avoid you. Why do you think that is? So I was looking at the internet last night and. Uh, you beat Ridenko in your 14th fight. Since then, you've been hard to match, haven't you? And you're yeah. only 19 then, weren't you? I'm 19, yeah. Yeah. No, I am. Uh, people don't want to see because say I'm an awkward opponent, but. That's Is it I'm, your style? And yeah. yeah but, and, listen, uh, people know 100% that they wanted to hit me. Yeah. You're not in front of them, are there? Some of them are there in front of them no, to get it out. Hundred percent. I can see why most said ways of avoid, but that's yeah. it. We won't yeah. fight anyone, but it's not as easy these days. Yeah. If 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 you're gonna fight somebody and you can't hit them, why would you want to fight them? It's uh, you see what I mean. It's take it as a compliment, you way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which fighters do you mirror yourself to, and are you, and are your fa what are your favourites of all time? What style do you model yourself on? Is it your own style? I want my own style. But you must have some favourites, you know, from from old days. Yeah, I've, I've got some favourite fighters and stuff. I, I like Larry Young because of, the, because of his jab. Yeah. I like Ali because of his movement. I like Marvin Agler because of the toughness of forward. I like Sugar Ray Leonard because of the variety of shots. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's some great fighters, and uh, yeah, them fighters there are incredible. He's in your dad's all time top three, isn't he, Larry Holmes, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's one of your top three as well. Yeah. He beat Ali, didn't he? But he was on, on his way then, out there now, but a tough guy. Has he, has he got a second longest reign after. I think the Zim, Vladimir, and Joe Lewis had the longest reigns, didn't they? Larry Holmes. Uh, you have a great amateur group pedigree, you are you're a world amateur gold medalist. How has that prepared you for the pro game? Yeah, every fight uh, gives you that bit of experience and yeah. put that bit of edge. So, yeah, the amateurs yeah. and background and stuff, that's what makes way on today. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant, that's brilliant. If you could give young amateurs turning professional nowadays some advice, what would it be, you? It's a turnover. It depends how the body matures, and let's say, especially young young kids, I'd say I wouldn't leave it much longer, really, because you need to get that adapt to the. Because there's a big difference between pros and amateurs, and some stick in that amateur in that amateur ground and you can't get out. Of it. Yeah. And yeah. Some down. When they're in pros, they're struggling. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a different game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see your point. Yeah, what makes Peter Fury such a great trainer? Obviously, he's your dad. So if you could separate him being your dad to being a trainer, what makes him such a great trainer? I always said that my dad's a man of. Uh, my dad's a wise man. He knows everything. He's very detailed, isn't he? He is. Don't miss a trick. <laughs> he's a perfectionist. Yeah, he is a perfectionist. Yeah. He has a lot of experience. Experience with him. even being around fighting since he was a young kid. Yeah. He knows, he knows that and he's just, one day he's just put it all together and trained me and just, I know every word my dad always says is always right. Yeah. He can judge someone, I tell him straight, but he is, he is an artist at what he does. Plus he's your dad, he's going to be your hero and you listen to your dad more than anybody, won't you? Mm, so. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I, f I know you'd say that, yeah. Do you feel that it's beneficial to be in a camp full of heavyweights or are you happy being the only heavyweight in camp? Yeah, obviously 
obviously you've got to have uh, Eddie Reese and Ned Sparv. Yeah, 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 obviously, yeah, yeah, you Sparv. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's always going to be Eddie Reese and Eddie Reese. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so it's beneficial, yeah. Does it help you to go away from home for training camps? Do you prefer to be in, say, France, Holland, or England? Which do you prefer? Do you know why it doesn't matter where you at, you've got a job to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, basically. So you just you're not bothered where you train then, you as long as you. I'm not bothered where I train. Still got to be done, on it. Exactly. You still got to put the hard graft in, and you still got to put the, uh, the work in. So. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Well, listen, that's been fantastic. Then I won't keep you because I know you're gonna have to get your rest. Yeah, that's no brilliant. You get back in bed. Well. It's quarter to seven, uh, 15th of March, the day after uh, the second lot of filming I've done with uh, with this week, Huey Fury out of the shadow, leading up to his fight with Sam Sexton. Uh, I got some good questions asked yesterday. Uh, one thing I noticed about boxing and, and seeing fighters in camp, uh, it's not all a bit of roses, is it? Because it strikes me as the training, aren't they, two or three times a day and they're pulled all over the place and that, and it becomes uh, intense. Uh, but the banter's brilliant. But the fighters, uh, they're pulled all over the place, aren't they? they, they they've got s so many sessions to do and, and rest to get in and that. The last thing they want is, you know, last thing they want is me, Porky Pick, walking around saying, how's it going, all right? Are you looking forward to the fight? And, uh, oh, bit of, bit of some deadlifts today, is it? Oh, a bit of sparring. last thing you want is me putting his, putting his, his snout in. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? And... And uh, but I suppose it has to be done, doesn't it? The media work and stuff like that. This is this is just a hobby to me, though. Just like it is for Peter, boxing's a hobby. But uh, the attention to detail, just week two, what what I'm seeing and it is unbelievable. Uh, you know, it's like sculpturing, isn't it? A, a, a big massive clay house brick. And sculpturing it into something, and, uh, and everything. That, and Peter's right, you know, all the pieces have to come together, don't they? You know, your advanced guy, the tech strength and condition advanced guy, and uh, you know, the trainer, the the, the boxers, you know, uh, the nutrition. It all has to come together. The the little. I think it's amazing, me, and I have. I have more respect for the boxing industry now than I think I've ever had really. It's very easy to be critical, be a keyboard warrior in it. It's very critical. Unless you actually see what goes on. You know, it's not just about going up to say EIS or up to a certain gym and watching somebody spar somebody. There's a lot more to it than that and it's a tough, tough job. And you know, and then they they have to do the they go to Peter takes them to Lake Windermere. Oh God! I mean, I'd be all on to walk round there. They might run round, but uh, I remember Dave Allen saying to me, it's, "Oh, oh, it was best two year of my life training with Peter, but it was also worst two year. You know, we used to go to Lake Windermere. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I've got more respect for him. Unbelievable." For boxers now than I think I've ever had. It's easy to be critical in it about certain matchups because it all has to come together, doesn't it? You know, sometimes it has to make dollars and cents, and and it has to bring the fights on. Um, there's a there's a there's a lad there that I've not met before, uh, Ty Mitchell. He seems a nice kid. He's tall for a light heavyweight. You know, he he looks like he knows his way around. Around Jim, I hope he does well. Uh, I think that's Clift Clifton Mitchell's lad. He's a nice kid. Uh, yeah, they've got a good a good bunch in there. Yui, Peter McDonough, he's a lovely kid. 
Savannah, Marshall, Ty Mitchell, and Peter there, he's like commander at ship. Well, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it yesterday. Bother me about going to Bolton from here. I'd go to Devon for stuff like that, because I, I just love things like that. I like the, uh, the people that are, that are in the gym and that. I met that Frank, he's a nice guy. I like boxing that much. Uh, I like it, I like boxing. I like how it all comes together. But that's the second time I've been there on this particular camp. So it's like 10, today's Thursday, so it's seven, t is the 10th day in camp. So yesterday was ninth day, so nearly ten days they've done them them lads and obviously Sianna, Sianna, Savannah. So they've got eight week this Saturday to go. It's very very interesting and I can see it all coming together and I'm looking forward to a press conference. Looking forward to it. Uh, it's amazing how it all comes together. I'm wondering who uh, who Peter McDonough's going to fight, who Savannah's going to fight, who Ty Mitchell's going to fight. That'll be the matchmaker's job, to match them. Uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to speak to Mick Hennessy. I've got some questions to ask Mick. He's an old school promoter. Gets a bit of stick, but I'll, I've got a lot of time for Mick, Mick Hennessy because if you look at his career, he's signed guys from debut and they've gone on to win world titles. So he obviously, he's, he's got a gift for signing the right people and uh, I'm a big Mick Hennessy fan, big Mick Hennessy fan, so I'm looking forward to interviewing Mick Hennessy and I want to get Savannah Marshall, Ty Mitchell and Peter McDonough, I want to get five minutes each with them, let them get onto this, this film and that because they're all part of the team aren't they, they're all we're all mucking in together. There's obviously they're going to see each other day in, day out, and it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. So, all right. Well, better get up and get some work done. <coughs> well, it's uh, it's March the 18th. I'm at uh, the lovely Macron Hotel. It's joined on to Bolton Wanderers Football Club, or is it Macron Stadium, the White's Hotel, that's it. And we're here for Peter Fury's 50th birthday party, 50 years young. I'm 49 next year myself, so I hope it's a good, uh, hope it's a good birthday party for Peter. There's a few people down there, it's uh, quarter past seven, so I'm about 15 minutes late. Uh, I ain't got a phone charger. Uh, Dennis Hobson and Peter Fury Jr. have uh, taxed my uh, I, uh, iPhone charger so I'm uh, stuck, I feel like I'm uh, in no man's land. So just a quick video, uh, I'm hoping to interview Mick Hennessy. Uh, I've got a lot of time for Mick Hennessy. I don't really know him to be honest, I've met him a couple of times. I met him at Frotch Pascal, I met him at Frotch Damon Haig, uh, I've been to loads of Frotch fights but other times I spoke to him and I spoke to him at the Frotch Dirrell. Other than that I haven't really spoke to him so I don't really know McKenzie that well to be honest but his track record speaks for itself doesn't it? So I'm hoping to get a, an interview with Mick today to go on to this little mini documentary thing I'm putting together for Yui. Uh, just, just a bit of a something I'm doing in my spare time but Mick Hennessy, I don't know if anybody knows, any fans out there, but he's like Carl Frosch, Tyson Fury, Darren Barker, Chris Eubank, all from, from debut, and Yui, of course Yui got robbed, didn't he? So if Yui hadn't got robbed, he'd have had five world champions that he signed, and not one of them is, uh, were an Olympian. I think that must be some sort of record, is it? Because when you think about it, Matchroom have been going 32 years, and they've only had one world champion from, from debut that they signed that wasn't an Olympian. That's Herbie Hyde. The other two were Anthony Joshua and Carl Yafai. So I think Mick Hennessy, his record, speaks for itself. And that's why I always say Mick Hennessy is probably one of the best guys in boxing at spotting talent. He's up there with Bob Arum. 
But then again, Bob Adams has been that big, hasn't he, for the last... Since... Mid... Since 76, Montreal Olympics. He just signs Olympians, doesn't he? Montreal ones and... 84, 1984. Did he have any of them lads? I'd be surprised if he didn't. So Mick Hennessy... He does fantastic with those that are not Olympians. Time to go downstairs and uh, face the music, is it? Music or not the music? Uh, face the music, yeah, hopefully not. Uh, just uh, say hello to everybody and wish Peter happy birthday. And. Uh